G'day everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we're looking at the third model in the third generation of the Falcon series of cars, the Ford Falcon XC. So the XC Falcon was produced from July 1976 through to March 1979 and it replaced the very popular XB model. The range consisted of the Falcon sedan, the Falcon wagon, the Falcon 500 sedan, the Falcon 500 wagon, the Falcon GS hardtop, the Fairmont sedan, the Fairmont wagon, the Fairmont GS hardtop, and the Fairmont GXL. There was also the Ford Falcon utility and the Ford Falcon van, the Falcon 500 utility and Falcon 500 van, and the Falcon Sundowner van. Depending upon the model, the engines varied from the 3.3 litre, 200 cubic inch six cylinder straight six engine. You could upgrade to the 4.1 litre, 250 cubic inch six cylinder engine. The 4.9 litre, 302 V8 engine, or the 5.8 litre, 351 V8 engine. And interestingly enough, the uh, engine capacities went from cubic inches in terms of what was displayed on the vehicles to litres, and uh, you could see that on the front fenders of the various models. The six-cylinder engines, uh, in order to meet the requirements of ADR 27A uh, emission standards, featured a cross-flow head, and this really did uh, enhance the performance and help offset the, uh, the impact of those emission Standard. And I would say that I think Ford did a better job on that than Holden did on the HX uh, models where they really did suffer quite significantly in their six-cylinder engines as a result of uh, 27A. All V8 engines uh, in the XC range had four-barrel carburetors, four Venturis, and that was on the 302 and the 351 V8s. Four-wheel disc brakes were also standard when you uh, opted for the 351 V8 engine, and that also came with the 9-inch diff. The uh, gearboxes on the 351s in the automatic, you'd have a standard four-speed manual or an optional uh, FMX uh, gearbox on the 351s. On the 302s, you could get a standard four-speed manual, or you could also get the C4 transmission from a styling perspective, the XC Falcon featured uh, much heavier chrome bumpers, front and rear, uh, with overriders available on some models as options and standard on others, like the GXL, for example. The grille on the base model Falcon was quite simple compared to the previously more aggressive style of the XB, which had Mustang themes. It was a rather simple uh, rectangular sort of grille design protruding in the centre part with a uh, single headlight treatment on each side. There was an option of a uh, GS rally pack, which then uh, upgraded the vehicle to include the four round headlights. On the Fairmonts, uh, they received a rectangular headlight. And these headlights were sourced from the uh, UK Ford Granada. Ford designers also wanted to I suppose remove a little bit of that Coke bottle design theme for the rear. So they replaced the uh, the rear doors of the uh, XC Falcons to improve visibility, increase the glass area. And they did this by uh, using the doors, the rear doors from the actual Ford Fairlane. So that's an inter interesting point. And if you look here, you can see the difference between the XB door and the XC door. The GS Rally Pack was fitted as standard equipment to the Falcon GS hardtops and was available as an option on uh, Falcon 500 sedans and wagons, Fairmont sedans and wagons, Falcon utes and vans, and on the Falcon 500 ute and van. And this pack included uh, special paint treatments, uh, the bonnet scoops, the bumper overriders, the slotted steel wheels, enhanced instrumentation with a full Ray, array of instruments, sports steering wheel, and the long range driving lights. Uh, the driving lights were not included uh, in the pack when it was fitted to the Fairmont models because they had the rectangular lights. And the GS pack uh, really did dress the car up really nicely. 
the GT disappeared from the range, uh, and that uh, was at the end of XB, and the Fairmont GXL replaced the uh, the GT. And the GXL had uh, blackout treatments around the windows, the grille, and the rear uh, area of the boot lid. It had uh, the bumper overriders. It had Volante alloy wheels, uh, available in a 4.1 litre engine, uh, optional 4.9 or 5.8. Uh, corduroy interior trim, unique door straps, uh, full instrumentation with a padded treatment on the uh, on the dashboard. Uh, it also had a unique steering wheel, and these cars were really very nicely equipped, albeit you know not in the same uh, I suppose style as the GT. This had more of a luxury uh, uh, focus. The Falcon Sundowner van was also available. That was based on the Falcon 500 van, uh, but it was also fitted with uh, the GS uh, rally pack options. So it had things like the comprehensive instrumentation, the bonnet scoops, the driving lights, the um, you know the bumper overriders. Uh, you can also get color keyed bumpers as a as an option, but uh, and the um, either the steel road wheels or the Volante wheels, and also. Uh, quite a, an elaborate decal package as well. That was sort of towards the end of the panel van craze. In December 1977, 12 special build XC Falcon hardtops were released, all were beginning with uh, VINs beginning with JG65TE. And these were based on GS hardtops, but featured a homologation pack of additional parts that Ford persuaded CAMS that was now available as standard on GS hardtops. This was in order to include those parts on their race cars. And the pack included uh, front and rear spoilers, twin electric radiator fans, various body and steering braces for durability and stiffness, and a reverse bonnet scoop that supplied cool air to the engine via a circular hole on the bonnet. This homologation pack would also form the basis of the 30 Option 97 Bathurst Cobras the following year. And speaking of uh, Falcon Cobras, in August 1978, Ford Australia introduced a limited production of Falcon Cobra hardtops. This is really to get rid of the last of the the uh, the bodies that they had for the hardtops as that, that model was coming to an end. And these were a high-performance version of the XC Falcon hardtop. Only 400 were built, and they were fitted with the 4.9-litre V8 or the 5.8-litre V8 as well as 30 special 5.8 Bathurst editions. And the Cobra was the uh, the brainchild of Edsel Ford II, and he's the great-grandson of Henry Ford and grandson of Edsel Ford I and uh, the only son of Henry Ford II. And he worked for uh, Ford Australia as a sales and marketing uh, director uh, during that period. And he had seen uh, what Ford had done with the, the Mustang II uh, special editions and thought that would be a good way to uh, create a special edition to remove or move on the last of the 400 uh, bodies for the Falcon hardtop. During my time as uh, product planning and brand marketing manager for Ford Performance Vehicles, I took the inspiration from Edsel Ford II and released a series of uh, FPV Cobras in sedan and ute form. And these also sold out uh, extremely quickly and became real collector's items just as the XCs did. Each car was also individually numbered and that also, uh, I guess, set a theme for performance cars in Australia down the track. The XC Cobras were built in uh, batches from uh, July through to September 1978. All Cobras from Number two through to 31 featured the uh, the black shield seats, bucket seats, and Cobras from 32 through to 400 featured a distinctive uh, black and blue uh, seat, which was, uh, so it was interesting how there was two variations there uh, within the build cycle. The XC Cobras were initially painted all bold blue and then masked up uh, where they laid the snow white over the top. So they weren't white cars with blue stripes, they're actually blue cars with the white highlights. All Cobras were based on the Falcon 500 GS hardtop 
Uh, and they were also included uh, four-wheel disc brakes, limited slip diff, dual exhaust system, tinted band, laminated windscreen, and to this you could add additional options. 400 Cobras that were built, which uh, had option 96, included front spoilers, vacuum formed. Uh, the Bathurst cars had fiberglass spoilers at the front, a rear spoiler of fiberglass, um, colour-keyed bumpers to match the exterior striping, uh, the body side protection mouldings were deleted, and also the quarter panel, uh, the dummy air scoop on the, uh, the rear quarter panels was also deleted. The cars also had tinted uh, rear windows and 15 by 7 Bathurst Globe alloy wheels. The cars featured the Cobra name decal uh, mounted on the, uh, the boot lid on the right hand side above the tail light. The uh, Cobra snake decals were on the fenders and also a die cast plinth carrying the uh, Cobra name decal was mounted on the glove box door. And then all cars were numbered from 1 to 400. There were a large number of other uh, technical specifications which also were um, made to many of the Cobras. I won't go into them all here, but safe to say it was a really outstanding looking package and it certainly gained a lot of um, you know, attention in the media and the public alike. A limited edition of interest was the Alan Moffat Special. In 1977, a limited number, 500 of Falcon 500 sedans, were marketed as Alan Moffat Specials. And these cars received uh, XB GT style blackouts and a sticker on the front doors consisting of Alan Moffat signature and uh, an Australian flag, as well as other options such as the GS Rally Pack and sports handling suspension as standard. A really cool vehicle was the, uh, the Falcon XC uh, Concord van, which was a show car for the 1977 Melbourne Motor Show. I also recall seeing it at the Sydney Show, or uh, maybe I saw it at the uh, Hoyts Entertainment Centre. I think it was on display uh, downstairs uh, in Sydney. Uh, either way, that was uh, a custom van that was designed by Ford designer uh, Peter Akati Payne. And uh, initially it was a show car, but then he sold the fiberglass body kits. Um, you know, as aftermarket pieces so that, so that effectively any panel van, XC panel van, could be uh, made into a Concorde um, styled vehicle. And uh, it was pretty pretty out there, a little bit reminiscent of some of the Mad Max uh, type styling themes. Now, Holden uh, released in 1977 its HZ series of um, Kingswoods, premieres and so on with the radial tuned suspension. And that suspension really improved the dynamics of the Holden, which had been quite wallowy and, and more designed for ride than handling. Uh, under Peter Hannenberger, who later became managing director, he was an engineer for, from Opal uh, that was working at Holden at the time. And uh, Holden produced a rather scathing uh, TV ad uh, that you can see here that um, really showed the, the, uh, the handling comparison between the Holden and the Chrysler and... Uh, the Falcon in particular, but also things like the 240K and showed the uh, shortcomings of the opposition compared to the Holden. Now, I'll leave it to you to look at the uh, entry position of the Holden at the wit first witch's hat to the other cars, but um, certainly Holden uh, was showcasing its uh, vastly improved handling prowess. Now, Ford wasn't going to take that lying down, so in May 1978, they re released a Series 2 uh, XC range, which uh, featured uh, an anti-sway bar at the rear, beefed up front sway bar, and also revised spring rates to substantially improve the handling. If you wait till the end of this episode, you'll see the TV ad that Ford uh, did to combat the Holden ad. Total production of the Falcon XC range reached 171,082 vehicles prior to its replacement by the XD, which was released in March 1979. Look out for an episode on the XD Falcon. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode on the Ford Falcon XC. Make sure you uh, check out the previous episodes, if you haven't already, from the XK right through to XC. And there'll also be uh, upcoming episodes on uh, all the model Falcons as we go forward. So anyway, thanks again for watching. Please be sure to give the episode a, uh, a like 
and also make sure you uh, hit that subscribe button in the lower right hand part of the screen and we'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye. You are about to see a compelling demonstration of a genuine automotive engineering breakthrough. This is new Holden Kingswood SL, equipped like no previous Kingswood, with radial tune suspension. Watch it through this snaking S. Smooth, safe, with a minimum of lean. Average speed, 75.96 kilometers per hour. Now watch some competitive cars. Same test, same driver. Chrysler CL Valiant. Toyota Cressida. Here's Kingswood SL again. Now XC Falcon 500. Two forty K Datsun. T E Cortina six. Watch new Kingswood SL again. Holden's stabilizer bars and suspension components are matched to the steel belted radial tires. The radial tuned suspension badge means safety and confident road holding. Only Holden has it. Now with push button radio, electric demister, quartz halogen headlights. New Kingswood SL with radial tuned suspension. Drive a real change for a change at your Holden dealers now. Between them, these six professional racing drivers have won just about everything worth winning in Australian motorsport. They came to the Ford high-speed test track today to prove a point. This is a production model 78 Falcon 500. Now, Falcon suspension is matched to high-quality steel belt radial tires and is engineered for smooth ride as well as for handling. The Falcon is now traveling at over 90 kilometers per hour. Once again, and the point we're making is that no matter how a car looks when it's driven around witches' hats, it's how a car performs when your life's at stake that really counts. We never felt better about Falcon. And Falcon never felt better.